This video is going to have four parts. First, I will play the sea shanty theme and variations at performance tempo. Then I'll play them slower at a good practice tempo. Then we'll talk through um, some of the, the dynamics and articulations and other instructions that are labeled in the piece. And then we will talk about how to create your own variation of sea shanty that fits in with the creative prompt at the bottom of page 17 in the book. So here is the performance tempo. slower practice tempo back at the theme. Now let's talk through some of the interesting things that are notated in this theme and variation. First of all, um, this is a traditional sea shanty. That's an old, like a, a you know, sailor's tune that would be hummed and sung on the boats and um, people would make up their own words. And so there are a lot of words that go along with this traditional tune. You probably, um, well, you might have heard, what do we do with the drunken sailor? That's like the most famous set of words, I think, that are attributed to this um, particular tune. But what we have is a theme, which is the main melody of the sea shanty. Da, 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 da. That's the first little piece of eight measures that you see on page 16. And then we have variation one, variation two, then variation three. What are these? Well, they are, um, little pieces that are the same length as the theme and they are embellishing the melody a little bit and maybe placing it a little higher on the keyboard maybe a little lower adding some extra notes changing the rhythm a little bit but uh, in general adhering to the overall tune or at least the harmonic structure you come to expect when you listen to this song which is starting off in E minor and then dipping down to D major coming back to E minor with a very brief dominant seven back to E minor. Um, so it's like that kind of harmonic structure is what the listener is expecting. Once they hear the theme and then the variation, they're kind of expecting it to happen again when you start the next variation and the final variation. So let's play through these together. I'm gonna to play slowly and talk through it a little bit. On the theme, you have accent marks at the beginning with your left hand. How do you play an accent mark? You play it with um, a little more force and a lot of pressure in the key. So it's loud, yes, but it's definitely a kind of a forceful feeling. You can use your arm weight 
let your arm drop into it. The other thing about the theme is it's marked forte, so that's adding to um, you know the the ability to play this accent mark pretty easily. If it's loud and it's accented, it's pretty easy to play. Just play it like you mean it. Drop down, legato. Here's accent. suggesting you touch your arm when you play that. I'm just touching my arm so you can see how my arm weight is being utilized here a little bit better. Now the left hand has uh, full value notes and legato. The right hand has staccato. So playing staccato chords, how do you do that? Well you definitely want a light touch. Um, it can be a little heavier actually since it's marked forte but I always advise my students play staccato like the keys are hot. If you play it like they're hot you'll get a little extra bounce off the keys, which gives staccato its, um, its character. I think it needs a little extra bounce. You don't just wanna go like that and stay right on the keys, unless there's some particular reason you need to do that. So if you do this nice accented left hand and a very light bouncy right hand, it provides a nice contrast. accents and staccato at the same time in the left hand. So how do you play staccato but accented? Well, you still want that um, feeling of a hot key where you don't want to press very long at all so that you spring off, on, off of it, but just play it with a little more determination, like you have to press very firmly to turn off the heat on this key, if that makes sense. Pressing uh, firmly, but I'm still springing off. Ooh. Loud, ritardando. So you have a ritardando there on the next to the last measure. That's measure seven. But you keep it loud. It's marked forte now. So even though um, a lot of times when you have a ritardando, you will soften. Not in this case. You stay nice and loud. Okay, variation two, big dynamic change here, mezzo piano, but it is a tempo, meaning original tempo, so don't slow down when you're performing this, just make it softer. Nice light staccato. Here comes a ritardando. And softening to a piano at the end. There's a diminuendo and a piano at the end. So what you have to do is starting on the scale, you have to lighten that as you go. I find it very nice to use a little wrist rotation there, leaning up at the end, circling up, to make sure that I'm not going to accidentally play that final E too loud. It just lets it taper nicely and rounds it off. And if you practice that, you'll uh, sort of get some muscle memory in and it will make it almost impossible for you to accidentally play that too loud because your wrist will know what to do. It will do this little rounding motion and then it will just make sense to be softer at the end. Variation three, nice and loud. Also, we're taking the left hand an octave lower and using some pedal. So just let those left hand notes ring out nice and loud. The pedal's down. Um, you can spring off of them a little bit because the pedal is down. You don't have any pedal coming up where you need to leave your fingers down. So you can let the weight of your arm sort of propel you upwards. That helps with the ringing sound, I think, springing off a little bit. It sounds like the strings are being um, struck a little harder. Extend here to a sixth. Double forte at the or double F, yeah, double forte at the end. Um, what I like to do there is a big kind of a springy motion to make it look really dramatic when people are watching. So I will give you a little demo here. I'm leaving my foot. 
foot down to get some extra time there for the fermata. Okay, now final thing here on page 17. There's a creative prompt that the Fabers have written in and it says, can you make up your own variation of sea shanty? And the answer is, yes, you can. It's not that hard to do. For one thing, you're going to follow the formula that's already been laid out in the theme and these other variations. It's eight bars long. You're going to start with the foundation of E minor. You're going to move to D major. You're gonna move back to E minor. And then right before the end, you're gonna take a little dip into the five seven chord, which is a B seven in this case, because we're in the key of E minor. So B is the fifth. That would be the five seven, B seven. And then we're gonna come back to E at the end because we want to end on the tonic, of course, like most songs do. So all you have to do is come up with the way you want to play the left hand, and then we'll get the right hand in there. This is a really simple way to do it. And there are other ways to do it too. You don't have to have the chord structure in the left hand, but I find it easier to do this way. You can either play the full E minor chord, and then the full D major chord, here and back to the E minor. Or if you want something a little more simple and a little broader sounding, just play the fifth. Don't bother with the third note, just the open fifth. So in E minor's case, it would just be E to B. And then for D, you would just go down and play like this. I'm not suggesting you actually play like this with your fingers curved over. I'm just doing that so you can see. Um, my fingers would normally be like this. In variation three, they utilize this open fifth version of the chord. This is also called a power chord. It's just the tonic and the fifth. So you can't really tell by just hearing these two notes, whether it's major or minor, and it doesn't really matter. Um, your right hand is gonna fill in the notes that will clue the, re the listener into whether it's major or minor. Um, and you know, it doesn't really matter to them either. It just needs to have this sound going back and forth between um, minor and major like we do in the theme. So either way, if you want to do full chord, that's fine, or just the fifth, that's fine. When you do the five seven, you do need to do these three notes. Well, I guess you could just do that, but I think it sounds a lot better if you keep the seven in there. It, it gives it that um, leaning kind of feeling. Okay, I'm just gonna use the fifth for my chords, and then I'm gonna figure out a little pattern, a tiny little pattern here to do. Um, for the E position, and then I'm gonna do the same thing in the D position. So I'm gonna go, hmm, really simple here. I'm just gonna start with E, and I'm gonna use this finger to cross down to the leading tone. And then I'm gonna do that with my hand in the D position. And then I'm gonna do it again in the E position. And then for the last two measures, I'll add a little something different, a little fancier. I'm still just staying in that E position. I'm going up to the fifth note and coming back down. Dun, 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 dun. Move it. Move back again. Now flourish. It's actually quite simple, but it follows the pattern that we've been following this whole time. So with the left hand fifths, there's something. Back. I just really felt like I had to add a low E there for some reason. So why am I being so repetitive and monotonous here? Why am I doing the same thing three times in a row? And then I'm doing it again. Can't I think of anything better than that? Well, I could, but actually it makes more sense to keep this repetitive. Um, it's a pattern based tune. It's uh, very repetitive and you know, people kind of like repetitive songs because when they hear the first group of notes that you play, that little hook, that catchy beat at the beginning, da, 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 they're logging that in their brains, they're hearing it and they're um, they're kind of memorizing it as you're playing it. So the first time you ever played this for one of your friends, 
most of them would probably be able to sing that back to you immediately because that's just something that humans really like to do. We like to hear something and mimic it back. So then when you move down to D position and you do the same thing again, your listeners get really excited because they realize that they already know what's coming and they're already humming along in their head, whether they know it or not. They're anticipating and they're enjoying it. They know what's coming and then they're getting really excited and they're kind of hoping you're gonna do the same thing again, at least sort of. And you did, and then you changed it. And you know, by that point, they're glad. But the first three um, little sets of that where it's just pure uh, melody and then repetition, it's actually kind of enjoyable for people to hear that. They like hearing something and feeling like they understand it right away. Um, of course, more sophisticated listeners are gonna maybe be a little bit bored, but I'm telling you, if you're just playing this for your teacher or for a friend or your parent or your daughter or you know whoever, they're just gonna be like, oh, yeah, you did a good job, that makes sense. It sounds like a song. You actually wrote that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a little simple. Yeah, well, okay, it's just like this homework assignment I got. So that's one way that you can um, sort of put together your own variation. There are um, so many ways, endless ways that you could uh, change that up. You could do the chords in the right hand and the melody in the left hand, like I said. You could move higher, you could move lower, you could spread your hands apart and create more of a distance uh, so you have a big bass and a light treble. Um, you could add more pedal, you could add some 16th notes and go super fast if you really want to do that. There's just so many different ways you can work on your improvisation and composition skills here. This is a really great assignment, so I do hope you try it.